Okay, well, welcome everyone back to uh, in-person, in the auditorium uh, seminars. And uh, today are, we are uh, uh, fortunate uh, to have um, our very own uh, Wei Ming Tsai giving his one-hour student seminar uh, prior to graduating uh, next fall. And um, uh, Wei Ming came to us from, uh, from the great uh, National Taiwan University in 2017, where he had uh, done some cloud modeling actually before uh, and uh, about uh, organized convection, and he sort of continued to work on that uh, topic here as well, and also uh, column water vapor with uh, Falk Amalung has been uh, a, br a branch of his work that he might mention just at the end, but uh, it's also a, uh, an exciting glimpse at, the, at convection in a, yet enough, yet in a different uh, geophysical field, uh, water vapor. Anyway, uh, Wei Ming, uh, take it away, thank you. Brian. Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, today I will share my long journey of exploring tropical convection and its connection to the mass of the pattern and also lots of dynamics. How did tropical convection look? So let's start by the satellite image of the tropics. Sometimes it may be easier to classify some cluster convection over tropics. For example, I hope they have some unique and the um, um, unique uh, characteristics we can easily identify. For example, of those three uh, cyclones or hurricanes that have you know, clear rotating structures and also some the eye walls and they all span a wide range of proton scale. But on the other hand, we also have those um, constant convection developing frequently in the space, but it's difficult to classify them into a certain category. So uh, for example, this one seems uh, more aviating space where the other one is more fragmented. The question here is, are those aggregated uh, unclassified convection important to the tropical weather and climate? As we saw from the satellite image, uh, tropical convection can span a wide range of scale with compact structures, and also those cluster convection are important building blocks for even larger organizations such as NGO or ITCD. And why are uh, those uh, tropical convection important? Because uh, it acts as heat engine over tropical uh, to drive the logical circulation and also determine the thermal stratification and also uh, adjust atmosphere instability by releasing tape. So those processes together uh, will cause uh, some impacts uh, on the hydrologic cycle, also the radiation. And actually, uh, theoretically, we can relate convection to large-scale dynamics based on the thermal equation over here. So the latent heating profile can uh, be related to the di diversion uh, responses. And, uh, and different call types may correspond to different heating profile. For example, the convection um, have uh, a heating profile like this with maximum heating at the middle uh, of the troposphere. And with the, uh, for the stratophone cloud, you will have the upper level heating, but a cooling in the lower level. And those uh, figures below corresponding to their divergent uh, responses. But even though uh, the latent heating profile and those dynamics uh, response can be decomposed in such a simple way. But uh, in nature, we got variability in cloud forms, which increases the complexity of the moon dynamics involved over the tropics I've seen here. And compared to the isolated plumes, those cluster convection, or frequently named as massive convective systems, actually are uh, clouds organized on larger scale than the individual 
thunderstorm and usually persists for a longer lifetime, such as hours or even days. And also, they are responsible for uh, more than 50% of rainfall of the tropics. And observational evidence shows that uh, a larger uh, convective system will last longer, and which in turn will have a broader impact on the tropical weather as well. And many efforts have been uh, put uh, to understand those uh, evolution of tropical convection, also their influence over multiple scales. Recently, uh, uh, in the higher research of modeling, uh, they kind of em further emphasized the clustering process and also its maintenance with time in the, uh, in the radiative convective equilibrium, which is an equilibrium used. Uh, frequently used to describe the climatology. And this uh, self uh they found that uh, convection can spontaneously merge into a single blob and self-sustain, and eventually will dry out the larger environment for the whole domain. And the drying process will have a long-term effects on climatology in terms of vapor variability and in space and also the spectral distribution of rainfall. However, uh, those, uh, even though those cultural uh, convection is important, but um, uh, it cannot be well represented in the climate models uh, because of our limited uh, treatments in the germs of permutation with empirical function and also most importantly our limited knowledge of how to relate those patterns or forms to the real functions uh, for example of flows or like tendency in physics like uh, moisture and temperature so in the following sections I will investigate why uh, massacre pattern matter and explore the relationship between cluster convection and also its larger environment so the first scientific question here is that uh, how observed convective evolution and also the property of cloud, its logical environment can relate to the degree of convective aggregation. In other words, from this figure, uh, from the satellite imagery over here, uh, those uh, convective areas are uh, uh, different from each other as they evolve or they, do they have different impacts on the local uh, weather phenomena. So specifically, we're trying to understand the connection between water vapor and the aggregated state. Also the variability in vertical structure, especially the vertical velocity, and also the uh, cloud characteristic due to convective evolution. Most importantly, uh, at the end, we're trying to figure out if there's any um, potential rule of those convective aggregation over the tropics. So for this task, uh, multiple data used are uh, between satellite observation and remnant data uh, as summarized by the table over here. And the next period of, uh, for this study is from 2014 to 2018. And we choose the tropical Indian Ocean as our target region. And uh, the red box on the right figure shows the uh, tropical Indian Ocean area, and a convective event is defined by the uh, box average uh, precipitation when it's larger than five minutes per day during a four-day time window. So here, the shading, uh, the shading uh, color indicate individual come back to events we identified from the observational precipitation time series. And this slide uh, introduced the composite NAS framework in details. So first, after we identify come back to events within the five degree box, and then we determine the call attributes during events from the uh, uh, satellite image, the invert uh, inverse image over here, including the uh, call number, call size, 
and also the compound pressure. An aggregation index called sky is used to quantify the degree of aggregation within the five degree box. So we can uh, quantify how those convection are uh, displaced in the space. So the sky uh, index depends on the number of call object within the five degree box and also the distances between those call objects. So the figure on the right shows two examples of our identified events. The left one is the more organized uh, or, or old aggregated with the uh, sky number of 2.3 over here. On the other hand, we have a you know, scattered event with the sky number of 5.2 so based on this uh, uh, attribute uh, determination and also the identification of events, we then eventually do the composite analysis over those events and categorize by their creation maxima and also sky index. So as I said, um, the uh, convection event will be uh, first uh, categorized by precipitation. And then in each rotation group, we further rank uh, the degree of aggregation for each event by the diesels. So a small diesel, sky diesel means a more aggregated event. So from this figure over here, uh, the axis on the right uh, to the right axis to the right means the more scattered event. On the other hand, axis to the uh, that means the more aggregated. So from this figure, we can see that uh, a more aggregated thing is associated with the drier environment and of a lower compound vapor over the five degree box compared to the uh, scattered thing, which is higher. And we have greater organic wave radiation emitted at top of that atmosphere in the more aggregated thing compared to the uh, scattered one. With the larger uh, variability of carbon water vapor within the five degree box. And those uh, sky dependence is consistent over different creation categories uh, indicated by different uh, symbols over here. And uh, figure below shows the carbon water vapor gradient uh, estimate within the uh, five degree box, and basically the larger moisture gradient is shown uh, in more aggregated thing as indicated by the red reddish curve uh, on top of the uh, blue curve over here. And again, this uh, sky dependence uh, is also uh, consistent over. Uh, different precipitation categories. As for the vertical structure, uh, figure on left shows the relative community profile. And a, a more aggregated state is associated with a dry environment uh, with a greater um, dryness above 800 million bar compared to the scattered event, which is moisture. And this uh, sky dependence is also consistent among those precipitation categories. The figure on the right shows the uh, a vertical profile of vertical velocity. So we can see uh, a clear transition from the top heavy structure from, uh, from more scattered events uh, uh, transformed into the uh, more body heavy structure in the more scat uh, more aggregated thing. And again, this is also a consistency uh, structure among uh, different treatment categories. So uh, in the following, I will just uh, show one category as sample for the rest of the results. An evolution of the top uh, cloud, evolution cloud top distribution is shown uh, on the figure on the right, and different colors indicate uh, different.
time lags relative to the uh, precipitation maxima we center uh, as the uh, evolution center indicated by the black contour. So from the uh, distribution of counter pressure, we can see a double peak structure is shown at the precipitation maxima in the aggregated state. On the other hand, uh, and we have a large portion of low clouds during the evolution. Uh, in contrast, uh, in the scattered event, the uh, the cloud transfer from the more shallow uh, one into a deeper cloud. For the uh, figure on the right shows the vertical velocity of, from metal two, and we can see that the body habit structure of the vertical velocity profile within the app can already exist before the precipitation peak and it turned into a like by model by model or double peak structure and precipitation maxima where the uh, low level upwelling is still uh, obvious and later on this body heavy uh, upwelling still lasts at the at the final stage of the evolution. And for the static event, we can see that it starts from the uh, middle half of structure and turn into end up into the uh, top half of structure and becomes even top heavy at the end stage of the evolution. So we're gonna wonder is the vertical structure important? So we why we should care about it? And the answer is yes, because it would uh, affect the vertical transport of moist and energy and water vapor during the evolution. So the variability uh, in the evolution uh, for vertical velocity actually leads us to the uh, gross moist vapor framework here. So the proxy equation of the uh, moist and energy can be expressed in this form, and after rearrangement, we can uh, summarize it. Uh, for the right hand side, I have these two terms. The first term is the advective term, and the other one is the dielectric term, including the uh, radiation and surface flux. So, based on this equation, if we have a naked n for this uh, dynamic advection term, then, which means we have more steady energy input. On the other hand, we will have more steady energy export. So, how does this uh, energy uh, transfer related to the vertical velocity structure? So, basically, uh, here given a vertical profile of typical um, more steady energy over the tropics, then once we have a more body heavy structure, then we actually will have importing more steady energy into the answer column. On the other hand, if it's top heavy, then we have you no know, energy export. So uh, the variability we've seen before in previous slide uh, seems like important in the energy transport to the average column. And before uh, we uh, put the energy framework into our uh, identified convective events, uh, we would like to first evaluate the reliability of moist dynamic in the map two analysis first. So um, here uh, shows the vertical velocity being uh, as a function of m minus md uh, from the dynamo sounding rate data and also the mayor to data respectively. So from these two figures, we can see they share some similarities in the transition between uh, the bottom heavy structure from the next space and get into a top heavy structure in the possible space in the, for the axis, for the axis. And also the, uh, the distribution of the quantity uh, is uh, quite similar among uh, those two data sets, which was a range between like point 0.2 and minus point 0.2, mostly. 
And a, a more direct comparison can be made by just part through the by step part here over here. Uh, condition on precipitation on uh, margin ten percent, which is like identified as uh, uh, precipitating event. So we can see that there's a high agreement between the observation estimate the NT, estimate quantity, uh, and also the magnitude analysis. So this high uh, agreement between those data that uh, actually gives us more confidence in applying those uh, this energy data uh, energy framework into our larger samples. So here, uh, to understand how energy import or transfer uh, can depend on the uh, aggregation, then here the left figure shows the evolution of precipitation, but plot in the uh, GMS base where the axis indicates the uh, energy uh, transport based on the equation above. So for the scattered, uh, so different color indicate a different um, uh, degree of aggregation. The red one is the most aggregated one. Green one is a neutral, and the uh, blue one is the scattered event. And for the evolution, you can see that uh, the evolution of the uh, aggregated event is mostly located within the negative space. On the other hand, the blue one, the scattered events, is almost symmetric to the origin. And what does that impact and uh, imply? So we can see that uh, based on this equation, so this uh, aggregated event, event is actually uh, implying the net moist energy import during the evolution if we integrate it over the space. On the other hand, uh, in for the scattered evolution, we can see that it's showing like uh, the imported and exported energy are largely compensated. So, which is more like a like traditional uh, idea of views of how you no know, convection adjusts the atmosphere. So there's no energy import or support. So it's kind of interesting. And we can also see that the most, en uh, most energy import can be also reflected by the convolved vapor here because the most steady energy is maybe largely com ex uh, uh, contributed by water vapor. So after precipitation peak, we can somehow still get an you know, increase in water vapor during the aggregated event. And then uh, we try to break down the moist steady energy budget into those components to see which turn could cause the difference between aggregated event and scattered event in terms of the energy transport. So basically, uh, we can see that for diabetic terms, uh, the cross mark and also the, uh, the circle mark, they don't uh, really uh, vary with the time, and there's no like discernible like sky dependence on them. However, the most discernible uh, signal is from the vertical advection where we have the long-lasting uh, energy import I found in the more aggregated event. On the other hand, the scattered one for this vertical advection turn, it becomes negative after the precipitation peak, so it's not as long-lasting as the aggregated event. And this long-lasting moist energy import may attribute to the vertical advection, and which explain by the more body heavy structure in vertical velocity we found before. And for the horizontal advection, which is always um, negative uh, throughout the evolution and maybe intensified after pre station peak and predominating the more steady energy budget by exporting the energy out. And 
as we uh, as we uh, talked before, mentioned in the beginning of the talk, we talk about the difficulty in representing the mo in representing the cost of convection within the climate model. And here we try to further point out uh, this, uh, try to uh, emphasize this point by bringing up the next tendency in MAR2. So in MAR2, the uh, final tendency for the uh, next state uh, can, uh, which uh, means the correct tendency toward the best gas we have and consistent of two components. The first one is model-based tendency and the other is analysis tendency we are trying to introduce here. The model-based tendency we, uh, concludes uh, the dynamic part and also microphysics and human transition part. And analysis tendency basically it tells how much adjustment we need to bring the uh, model's first guess to the analysis state. So from this equation, no, we if we have a uh, next tendency equal to zero, which means that you no know, model is perfectly in, uh, predicting the state variable, the analysis state, with the concurrent, uh, it was the current configuration of dynamic physics, so it's a perfect model. But if at is not zero, which means that you know, we have some like adjustment need to be. Uh, considered and is missed in the model based tendency. That is the model like there's some missing process in the in the dynamics or physically we consider. Then this uh, AT the NAS tendency can be a powerful uh, uh, variable to evaluate the performance of model physics. So we use this concept and just do the composite analysis uh, in our for the analysis tendency to our aggregate event and also the scattered event. And we found that um, the analysis tendency time series does not vary too much uh, during the evolution. So it's around zero for the um, uh, scattered event. However, in the more aggregate event, the cost of convection is involved. Then we got a like negative uh, Amount of analysis tendency, which means uh, like there's there's need uh, there's a need to um, have some more steady and just sink during the evolution. So the negative analysis tendency will imply uh, the bar vapor is not sufficiently uh, right now when we have the convection, which is more costly. And the figure on the right shows the uh, just trying to emphasize how much adjustment uh, is required to bring our like the model uh, tendency back to the real uh, NASA state. So this is a huge adjustment we need uh, when we have an aggregated event involved. So we try to emphasize the need of parameterizing connected optimization. So summary of the section one, uh, in the aggregated state, we usually have a dry environment with a larger moisture gradient and with the uh, mid lower mid outer level relative humidity, which is drier, and we have more outgoing long wave radiation emitted top of the atmosphere, and also a long lasting bond heavy structure is found in more aggregate state. And as for the potential rule of convective aggregation, we find that the net moisture energy poured is associated with aggregate convection, and which is explained by those long-lasting body heavy vertical velocity during the evolution. And at the end, we also try to emphasize the missing effects uh, that should be considered uh, for the convective aggregation in model physics. So okay, hey, uh, can, I, can I ask a question now? Yeah. Yeah, um, since we're on this section. Um, you know, we often describe the uh, negative gross moist stability state as unstable. Right, that you had that that time. Yeah. Um, why does it stop? Like, if once a, if the convective cluster gets into a state of negative moist gross stability, gross moist stability, then um, you know what also must is changing either in the environment or in the cluster so that it eventually changes back to positive stability. You 
You mean what? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, these, these clusters don't last forever, right? So yeah. they're they're not they're not like a hurricane, which you know is somehow could possibly go on forever. Um, uh, they, 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 they get into a state of negative gross moist stability, so they perpetuate themselves or they amplify, but then eventually they switch back over to, you know, they fade out, they, they, they kill themselves, something happens. Do you know what is changing? Is the environment around them changing? Is, is it not possible to maintain deep convection that always shift over stratiform? What, what causes them to evolve from that, you know, unstable state to a, a more, you know, typical state? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it's a hard question, so I'm, I'm not, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you may hard. not have a question, an answer yeah. right away, but maybe, uh, you know, the answer, because the answer might be in your data, in your, in your plots. So anyway, we can move on, but uh, maybe you can think about that. Yeah, we can think about that. from a different aspect to uh, speculate why cluster convection is special uh, com uh, compared to the isolated cones. So the scientific question here is which ecosystem of convection works better in releasing, in releasing atmospheric instability? Is the cluster one or the isolated one? So this question can be uh, further elaborated by the diagram, uh, by the schematic figure over here. So can imagine we have two uh, group of systems uh, of convection. One is like larger and cluster, and the other one is similar, like uh, isolated and scattered place. Then uh, they are all within the same environment and trying with the uniform forcing. Uh, for example, the radiative cooling and the logical try to destabilize the atmosphere. And then uh, those two groups of convection can you know, usually consume the instability to grow up to try to stabilize the atmosphere uh, as how you know, typical convection do. Uh, but in the same time, they will compete each other to stabilize the domain. So uh, this cloud cloud interaction uh, we want to explore uh, may require some um, simplified um, physical processes involved. So here, uh, from the more static energy, uh, if we are trying to uh, use the uniformly um, distributed radiative cooling and trying to give it uh, also the horizontal uh, homogeneous uh, superfluid to compensate the cooling, cooling effect, uh, uh, the, the energy due to the cooling. And then if we um, can neglect the uh, the the term for the tendency if it's like smaller or is in the equilibrium, then uh, as we have some convection interacting in the domain, then the special variability will essentially reflect the outcome of co uh, convection competition, which is hidden in this term. But it's basically um, zero as we consider uh, a periodic domain. So that, uh, so this uh, equation and this idea drives us to ask which one uh, wins, uh, which one the cluster convection or isolated convection uh, wings to serve better in releasing instability over the whole demand. And what will the resulting logical circulation look like after the competition? So the hypothesis is that the cluster convection can win this competition because they are, are more uh, efficiently releasing the instability, which I'll elaborate later by the results. So uh, to uh, start the competition, we use the uncross CMR model, which is a three-dimensional cardinal model, explicit the simulating convection, and also logical together. So the domain size here is 480 
has 480 kilometers square uh, with a horizontal scale of 2 kilometers. And it holds the main stunt rotating. And we use the double periodic boundary to close the system and with a spunk layer above 18 km height um, to damp out the gravity waves from top to surface. And the microfix thing is used uh, uh, more than uh, double pick, double moment. And for the uh, simulation here, uh, this simulation is forced by the uh, radiative cooling, uh, which is uh, homogeneously distributed as a constant uh, with the 4K per day below 12 km and linear decrease to 0 at 15 km. With the corresponding uh, surface flux, uh, with the same amount of radiative cooling flux to uh, compensate uh, the loss of energy in the domain, which is around like 400 watts per meter squared. And simulations run for 10 days to reach a statistical equilibrium and then we take the last five days for analysis. Then we still have to start a competition. We still have to uh, figure out a way to modulate different call patterns, which is the isolated and aggregated convection across the domain. But in the meanwhile, we don't want to directly change the density field. For example, we can put uh, cobalt, warm bubble within the domain, uh, within the different uh, plates in the domain, but you will ruin the density field. And also, it's hard to maintain those competition by um, dropping those warm bubbles. So, a physical way is by imposing the vertical wind shear, and vertical wind shear shows significant impacts on com convective pattern and size. So, here, the uh, the figure on the left shows the zonal wing um, uh, profile with the low level struck, uh, low level wind shear used in this simulation. And we're trying to build a, a shear belt within the domain by multiplying the modifying the zonal wind profile to the distribution function over here. So in this way, we can create a shear belt over this uh, location. Ideally, uh, we may have more clustered uh, convection developing within the shear belt while leaving the uh, rest of the domain being you know, uh, full of unorganized or isolated convection. And this zonal wind structure is maintained by notching the zonal Zonal FGU and trying to uh, maintain a shear belt structure so we can have always have uh, the cost of convection within the shear belt. And it's important to mention that there's no artificial convergence created by this notch approach. So we don't uh, have some uh, convergence, uh, convergence zone keep existing in the domain which will ruin the uh, competition. So uh, here's the snapshot shows the surface rainfall for each run. And we can clearly see that uh, over the shear belt, as we increase the shear intensity, we do have more cost of convection generated within, the, within this area. And another uh, organization index is also induced, it's called COP, trying to uh, quantify the degree of irrigation as we used our uh, first slide in the previous section. But here we use both to just uh, double check if those uh, convective pattern is more aggregated as we uh, impose stronger wind shear. It's just the uh, objective. Uh, measurement. So from the figure below, for those uh, aggregation indices, we can see that uh, the shear belt gets more organized or aggregated as we impose the stronger shear within the domain, as indicated by the uh, black dot uh, uh, 
uh, marked over here. And also, on the other hand, the remain uh, domain uh, is of the same organization gradient measure as the control run, so which means that it does not vary because they are uh, because shear belt. And we take this um, we take this uh, spread between the organized between those two er those two areas as the success in modulating the convective pattern across the domain or ensure the organization organization gradient. Then we can move on uh, to talk about the special variability in water vapor since we already uh, have a way to control the uh, spatial pattern across the domain. So we can see how more aggregated clouds can compete with isolated clouds. So here shows the uh, time zone of average precipitation water, precipitation water and rainfall. So. Um, for the principal water, uh, the domain average con uh, value of control run is plotted here as a reference uh, because it doesn't uh, show any large variation in this across the wide dimension, and we have no uh, interest in interpreting the variation. And as we impose a, a stronger wind shear, there's no uh, like shear dependence in the distribution of the water vapor uh, across the domain. And, but we do have like slightly uh, lower water vapor in the shear belt. On the contrary, uh, greater precipitation gradient is found over uh, across the domain as we impose uh, stronger wind shear where the uh, the vegetation is enhanced within the within the central domain, and the uh, vegetation on the outside are strongly suppressed. And this vegetation response is monotonous, uh, but it's non-linear because uh, it can be noted that as uh, it is until the uh, U10 with the U10 intensity of wind shear, we start having a contrast of uh, precipitation across the domain. But there's no clear uh, variability for uh, shear for the U5 or U7, which is imposing weaker wind shear within the shear belt. And relative to mean profile on the right, let's first uh, focus on the dash contour over here, which is uh, the profile for within the, an extra run using the uniform shear. And on the other hand, uh, it's the control run indicated by the uh, gray contour over here. So the comparison between the dash and the gray contour indicate that those uh, cluster convection seems can, uh, seems uh, to be able to uh, survive within or develop within a drier environment. Then uh, the solid con uh, solid contour here shows the shear belt experiments, which we're talking uh, here, where we allow the competition between two areas. And by comparing the dash line to the solid line, it seems like the uh, environment is less hostile for those uh, constant convection as we allow the competition between two uh, uh, ecosystems of convection. As for the large scale uh, dynamics, uh, the large scale circulation is introduced by the time zone average spring function over here. And the shading indicates the uh, mixing ratio of the cloud liquid uh, water and also the cloud ice water for uh, a process of the cloud field. 
And for the control run, uh, it's not surprising that we don't have any like circulation generated within the main because uh, they are all um, propagating and readily distributed. So there's no coherent circulation buildup. But on the other hand, as we put the shear build, and it seems like it started to uh, have some you know, interaction in the circulation, logical circulation across the two domain, uh, across the two areas are enhanced as we impose stronger wind shear. So we start having like clear signals of multi-layer structures and circulation as we uh, have a stronger interaction between the cluster convection and the isolated convection. And it can be also noticed that um, the so the, the carbon between the cost cost convection is in and the uh, logical circulation is uh, indicated by the the upwelling branch of the circulation over here and of, and the outside uh, the unsure area is coupled with the you know down shear uh, circulation over here and also accompanied by the reduced uh, cow hydro hydromedias, um, which indicate the decreased cow field and also the change, change the cow field over, uh, across the domain. So it seems like we have, like most of cows, um, concentrated in a shear belt at the end of the competition. Uh, as we uh, showed before, uh, we successfully used the uh, low-level wind shear to control the convective pattern across the domain. However, um, there, are so, there are some studies indicate that uh, some shear can also disrupt the development of convection. So here we try to wonder, uh, wonder if that uh, affects any uh, resulting loss of circulation if we really have that bad shear. So here we just um, create another extra experiment by using a uh, shear over the low and mid and upper levels to discuss the uh, possibility. So for the low, low jet shear, it's not surprising and it's pretty similar to what we've seen before with the clear circulation generated and also the greater rotation gradient uh, shown uh, across the shear belt and the rest of the man. And for the mid jet, it seems like we have upper level um, overturning becomes weaker, weakened with barely discernible rainfall vari variations within the demand. And for the high jet, uh, we start getting those complicated circulation and perhaps there's some like flip side above uh, for the circulation compared to the low level jet case. So we may say that uh, the feature in the uh, high jet case uh, does not support uh, the, um, the coupling between the convection and also the upwelling, which is identified as the convective oxidation process. So this carbon, this batch shear is not helpful in convective organization uh, as what it does for uh, low level jet case. So this, the coupling is the key um, for those um, convective organization to be uh, processed. In the last, uh, we speculate why uh, those uh, caustic codes can outcompete an isolated one from the perspective of buoyancy. So in nature, uh, buoyancy can determine whether uh, and when convection good can grow. So uh, here we just um, explore a few uh, features that can affect the buoyancy. Uh, for discuss uh, in the following. 
So here shows the distribution of cow radius in the shear belt uh, based on the uh, cow object we identified at each level for each cow object. And then uh, the big, the biggest uh, point for this plot is that the convection driven by stronger wind shear uh, as indicated from the uh, left to the right, we start having wider cow radius um, shown by the uh, white blue and also the wider updraft embedded. So with such a uh, uh, larger and wider uh, cow, we wonder if the updraft uh, is stronger within the larger cows. So we do the composite and try to uh, plot the vertical velocity being by the cow size. And in this result, we see that uh, why the cow size are associated with stronger upwelling. And the upwelling is actually accelerated faster with height, and which means that it remains more buoyant, indicated by the like the gradient, uh, for example, the gradient uh, in the lower level of the um, the vertical velocity, so it accelerates faster if the convection is more buoyant. And a, uh, a single book entrainment rate is also introduced in this analysis. So basically, the shear agglomerate convection is experiencing less uh, entrainment for the dry environment. On the other hand, the unsure part shows a higher uh, entrainment rate indicated by the dashed line. So summary for this section, um, so basically uh, using the idealized modeling under homogeneous forcing, the cost of convection can outcompete the isolated one by showing clear precipitation gradient and also the coupled with the luscious upwelling. And the competition can induce the overturning circulation and the overturning circulation is amplified as we impose stronger shear in central build. And for the uh, cow object analysis, we see that more cost of convection is having uh, stronger updraft and experiencing less dilution within the drier environment, which makes cost of convection special and thus efficiently stabilized for the domain because it remains more buoyant, so you can uh, grow upper and release the lab key efficiently then stabilize the whole domain without the help of isolated convection. So last, I just want to summarize our finding uh, from section one two to relate the convection mesoscope pattern and logical circulation together. So for most costly convection, we can see that it can survive in more hostile environment with dry up mid and upper levels. And also, it remains more buoyant, uh, experiencing less dilution, even with the dry, within the dry environment. And usually produce greater rainfall, and also showing clear coupling with larger circulation. The long-lasting uh, body heavy uh, structure we saw in the 5 degree domain um, observation, no uh, convective events, and the lower and upper level overturning introduced in the idealized model. And convective pattern uh, can be more aggregated as we have cost of convection assist in the domain. It can be detected visually and also uh, measured objectively by the index. And most importantly, uh, from observation, the convective, convective pattern or the aggregation can imply the vapor or more steady energy transport, which we relate a special pattern directly to the physical tendency in this way. And then those uh, energy import uh, from those events can further impact the logical environment by change, changing its uh, vertical structure of thermodynamic, which in turn um, affect the consequential 
development convection and loot the intact action together. However, uh, those uh, conclusions are drawn from idealized simulation and also the uh, convective evolution within the limited domain and also under the veteran framework, we're not really following a certain uh, convective system with time. So uh, how, uh, how those fighting can generalize over multiple scales remain a uh, further exploration. So here my talk today, um, thank you. Okay, thank you for the nice presentation. Do we have questions? Uh, maybe I should activate my camera here. Uh, questions from the room? No? Questions from the Zoom audience? Oh, there is something from Paquita. Just nice some talk. Well organized. So, okay, no question there, just a positive comment. That's good. Any further positive comments or <laughs> negative comments? Maybe it, was, maybe it was too long. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> I was trying to, to just want to leave now. <laughs> trying to get faster, like a stone. <laughs> maybe it was so comprehensive that there are no, no open questions anymore. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you you have so something else to? Uh, we'll talk about it. Later. Okay. Yeah. So okay, then it looks as if there are no more things to discuss. Thank you again. Um, Thank you all for coming in a person and uh, coming in Zoom. We will continue, if I remember that correctly, next Friday with uh, three student seminars, uh, one given by Hope Elliott and two given by uh, Hao Tsehe. Uh, so that will be very interesting. I hope to see everybody again. And that's it for today. Uh, happy weekend, happy Easter and goodbye.